of our favorite people is sitting across the table from us now, and I'm, I can't wait to hear the five secrets. It's Andrea Gigline. <laughs> the five secrets you must discover before you die. I like the must. Must. Huh? It's a must. You know, there are certain things about positive psychology. Mm. They are so grounded in the tenets that it is not a debate. <laughs> it is just a debate as to whether or not you make those choices to do them. Okay. And what I fell in love with, this book happens to actually be a PBS special. It, it is so well grounded that it has 235 people who were interviewed from the ages of 60 to 105. <laughs> and that was out of a pool of 4,000. And it wasn't me saying I'm happy, mm -hmm. but the request was, let us know who you know about above 60 years old who you think is happy. So what the author did... The author being? The author being John Izo, and I hope I'm saying his name right. Mm -hmm. I did not, um, I actually did not check that out. I believe his name is John Izo. I-Z-Z-O. I -Z -Z -O. Right. And I, unfortunately, in the Las Vegas area, we have not had his special on PBS, but I am going to start a write-in campaign yeah. mm -hmm. because the book has lit my fire for the last two weeks. Well, and, and everybody, and I, the thing of it is, everybody wants to know the secrets. Yes. Don't and they? You know, I will always refer back to our very first gathering on this show about this segment. Mm -hmm. And Tanya made the observation, you know, the stuff is just not new. Mm -hmm. And that is correct. It is not new. And it is through the stories, through generations, that we will continually be reminded of what we need yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. And what John has done in his book is actually gone to that segment of the population yeah. that we as a culture have somewhat forgotten. Yeah. You know, in the more ancient cultures, the respect for the elderly is at the absolute highest. Oh, yeah. And in our culture, over yeah. the last hundred years, we have diminished the value of wisdom to our elder population. But but isn't it's up to us to implement? I think that's the whole key. Choice. It, 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 you know, yeah. that is the key to self-help. That is the key to positive psychology. At every moment, you have a choice to make. What am I thinking? Do I need to change it? How am I acting? Do I need to change it? What am I feeling? Do I need to change it? And yet, who better to impart to us words of wisdom than those who have lived to 60, 70, 80, 90, mm -hmm. or maybe even to 100 years old? Correct. That's why I think his work is so groundbreaking. And I am actually going to be writing to the founding fathers of positive psychology mm -hmm. to recommend this as the book that goes alongside the books they have written. Because what he has done is gone to that population and said, now that you've done all those things and you've fallen into all those traps, people tell us you're happy. <laughs> What's the secret? Mm -hmm. And he came up with five. Mm. Be true to yourself, leave no regrets, become love, as different to just falling in love. Mm -hmm. Live in the moment mm -hmm. and give more than you take. Things that we've all heard about, mm -hmm. but when you hear the stories, and it is truly the stories, I mean, each day as I read the different chapters, my poor husband has been tormented with <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe this but there were some very good things such as in the chapter about living in the moment you know that is something that we say and on our last show together Tanya and I were talking about technology and one of the th the, the things that technology has done to us is make us a rapid response society. Mm -hmm. Well, that's in counterbalance to living in the moment because our technology is continually taking us mm -hmm. out. Rarely has a culture, it, no culture, has mm -hmm. ever developed with this need to respond as instantly. And if one of the main tenets to living a happy life is to live in the moment, we're kind of screwing that up from the get-go. <laughs> so the beautiful story in the book that really sat with my heart was actually one about the author, because the author is in, in his mid-40s, I believe, when he started this research. He may be a little closer to 50 right now. And what he talks about is how he was an avid hiker, mm -hmm. and each day he had a 40-minute hike that he took with his dog. And we who hike and who exercise are guilty of using that as actually becoming an internal like race yeah. to how fair yeah. fast we get places and he lives in a very the author lives in a very beautiful place mm -hmm. and he and his dogs were going out and what he realized was that his goal was to get through the 40 minutes yeah, and yeah, not yeah. see it yes and what he observed was that yes. his dog was really enjoying the living heck out of every yeah, bit of this. Absolutely. He would mm -hmm. stop and sniff, he'd mm -hmm. look up, he'd meet friends as yeah. in other dogs or people <laughs> and we forget to